It sure has been a while since I've talked about Decaying Winter. A few months ago, I made a theory about Decaying Winter in an attempt to cover all the lore revealed in its update, Last Stranded. To make a long story short, that video has become my most popular and most controversial video as of recent. And while I've gotten many requests to make another lore video on Decaying Winter, I've opted to not throw myself into that firing line of the DW community, because apparently suggesting that a creature that carves itself out of the ground and has a clear connection to death makes me the Antichrist for whatever reason. So you're now probably wondering what in the world I'm going to be talking about then. Well, in today's video, I plan on touching on a smaller, less explored aspect of Decaying Winter's lore, the lore of the perks. For the uninitiated, each of the 21 perks have a few descriptions that vividly detail the character behind the class. Most have never realized that these descriptions even exist, or they did know and have just never paid attention to them. Well, in today's video, I plan on doing just that. We are going to read each of the class descriptions and come up with a backstory that fits them into the lore. Now, with the exception of one of these, I must stress that none of these are actually likely to be canon origin stories for the classes. I just want to make that clear to the DW mob that I know is knocking on my door right now looking for an excuse to gun me down. This is not a theory per se for a reason. It's more of a speculation, a thought experiment if you will. Not me telling you that what I'm saying is fact. So with that out of the way, let's get right into the video. Starting with survivalists, I think that survivalist lore is just as simple as the perk itself. They were a very prepared person who was used to surviving alone before they were recruited for the agency. Very short, I know, but there doesn't seem to be much to them anyways. Next let's talk about Damned whose description reads, Condemned and cursed. You've lost everything. The only way forward is to survive when all is lost. Now based on the description and the animation in the menu, we can assume that damned users are a type of prisoner of war who was brought to Eden 227 against their will to fulfill a debt of sorts. Perhaps they were brought from New Earth, like they were a prisoner in Soph? Who knows? Now we are going to hit a string of very simple ones, and I'm not going to spend much time on them. However, if you have any theories of your own that are more expanded than the ones I'll present, leave them in the comments. I'll be reading all of them. First, let's start with Lazarus. It appears that Lazarus was simply a healer who was obsessed with the belief of self-preservation before joining. Prophet appears to have been a reconnaissance and tactics expert before they joined. Zealot was likely a commander, or higher ranking military commando, given the fact that his description talks about him having a strong bond with his allies, and the fact that he's literally a tank. Mind Flayer was definitely a scientist of some sort, but nothing else can be said for sure. Vagabond was likely a nomadic samurai hitman for the agency, due to his name and description talking about taking matters into their own hands. For Arbiter, it's tough, but I have a theory for them. We know that based on the description, we know that Arbiters like to take initiative and set things straight, implying that they have some sort of authority over others in the agency. We also know that Sledge Queen, a former high-ranking agent, was also an Arbiter. So perhaps all Arbiter users are a type of high-ranking demolitions expert? Who knows? Executioner is definitely a hitman of sorts, tasked with killing criminals and enemies of the agency. This is one of them that we can be very, very sure of. Immolator being a type of hitman or specific expert that the agency would call on to dispose of evidence or people based on this description, but it's kind of unclear. There's not really much to uh, Immolator. Berserker is just a drugged up tough guy, and that's literally it. I'm serious, lol. They have... They literally only exist in the lore because they have a better, more refined version of the Berserker Serum that was seen in Untitled Melee Game and Survival of the Fittest, called the Calamity Serum. Then they got hooked on it and became a killing machine. That's about it. Drifter was likely also an assassin that the agency hired. However, one distinction we can make, partly thanks to the description, is the fact that they originally didn't assassinate people for the agency, like Executioner and Immolator are assumed to have. I think that the agency hired them just to go to Eden shortly before the events of the game. Artillerist is just a marksman they hired. Not much to say about them. Risk Runner is equally as simple, he's just being a heavy weapons guy. Now, here's a few interesting ones. Hivemind is, was definitely a scientist slash reconnaissance expert who, ex who experimented on nanobots. However, something strange about him is that they refer to themselves with the pretense we. This could imply that, hive, that the Hivemind bees have partial control over the Hivemind user, as bees believe in safety in numbers and are controlled by the queen-like drones. 
However, this is far more likely that the hive mind adapted their speech patterns to be more like a bee's mindset, as they themselves pose as the queen bee by commanding them to do their bidding. Sovereign is most definitely a type of freed cultist who can weaponize the spirits of the undead. The proof is in their description, which talks a lot about enlightenment and the afterlife. Also, their menu animation shows them preparing to do a ritual of sorts. It could be that the spirits that they summon are a good version of the hidden Rigcon, as they both use a knife to attack enemies and are vaguely ghost-like, but I really don't know. And then there's Blitzer, who's just the demolitions expert. Tick Spider was likely some sort of person who worked against the agency initially, due to the description talking about their trickery and cunning to overcome enemies, but other than that, their origins seem very similar to Mind Flayer. Crosslink was probably just a dude who was obsessed with traps and brought a bunch of steel snares with him into battle. But for real, like, I don't really know what he could be like. And finally, Apostle. I've already said that the Apostle was once part of the Rigkun cult who partook in rituals, and after breaking away, is still able to benefit from its power. And despite having control over the Rigkun substance and the vessels it creates, the stuff fights back against the Apostle by hurting them. That part is widely agreed upon by the community and is accepted as fact. The part that people disagreed with in the last video is my idea that the Rigkun are a zombie of sorts. This is because a point I made in my previous video to prove that they are zombies was based on a texturing bug. And while that was kinda silly of me, I still think that they're zombies. Why would the shadow hunters appear as your deceased teammate? Why do hangers make you kill yourself? And why do they have a connection to the echo log where Yosef hangs some girl? Whatever they are, the rig can still have an obvious connection to the supernatural and death. And both the apostle and the cult that they escaped from are proof of that. But that's all a theory for another day. But anyways, that's all I've got for this video. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.